I'm breaking up my collection. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here and it's your first time here and you didn't already, my name is Tara and I'm a cruelty free YouTuber. So today I wanted to do a eyeshadow palette to clutter. So I know the setup is a little bit wonky and weird, but this was the easiest way that I could find to have these sitting comfortably and have all my palettes sitting here and to kind of show you all of them, do swatches, all that yada 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 yada. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. Oh, where to begin? We've got a lot. We've got, you know, like my ABH collection. We've got some Morphe. We've got tons of Juvia's Place. We've got um, Jeffree Star. We've got Melt. We've got Sugar Pill. I mean, we literally have everything. Tarte. Um, I'm hoping that my face isn't like fully cut off or anything like that. I wanted to sit comfortably, but I'm kind of like hunched over to get in the frame, so sorry. Let's start with, I see Juvia's Place, so we'll dive into these two. I have more than two Juvia's Place palettes, but. So this is the Masquerade palette by Juvia's Place, and I absolutely adore Juvia's Place shadows. They're so good, they're so colorful, they're so freaking pigmented, like the mattes, the shimmers, just everything is amazing. And I really love this palette. Uh, you have like your go-to warm brown shades and then you have like these nice pops of color and they're just, are just such good quality. They're super affordable. And I really miss playing with this palette a lot. So I'm definitely gonna keep her. Next up from Juvia's Place, we have the Magic Palette which is another one of my absolute favorites. And it looks like this. Um, yeah, this is just another really amazing palette by them. Like these shades, they're just so unique and beautiful. Like you just can't go wrong with any Juvia's Place eyeshadow palette. And I'm definitely keeping this guy. So the next Juvia's Place palette that I have here is the Zulu palette. And these are some of the best colorful shadows that I've ever seen. I promise that my posture is not this bad. I'm just trying to stay in frame, guys. Sorry. I feel like this is wonky, too. I don't know. Anyways, so, yeah, these are some of the best colorful shadows that I've ever used in my entire life. Like, they're just so vibrant and pigmented, and there's no way that I could get rid of this one, either. Like, they're just so freaking nice and again any Juvia's Place palette it's so worth it and they're just so affordable and so good you do have to be careful with some of the colors because they will stain but hey I won't complain if it looks beautiful right the next Juvia's Place that I have here is the Saharan which looks like this I would say this is one that I could probably declutter because even though I love their eyeshadows this one isn't super unique to me and I have a lot of these shades in other palettes whereas the other Juvia's Place palettes that I have I feel are a lot more unique and some of these colors I feel like I have repeats in other Juvia's Place palettes so I feel like this is one I will declutter let me just swatch a few of them for you so you can see I've done a lot of damage on these <laughs> so yeah here's some swatches from this little beauty right here it is a great palette there's nothing wrong with it I just feel like I don't get enough use out of it and somebody else could definitely get a lot of use out of it Next Juvia's Place palette I have here is the Dolce I just love their packaging too can we just talk about that for a minute and she looks like this and once again like this green shade I have in other Juvia's Place palettes um, but I just love like this pink and this lighter pink and this guy right here. Like I don't own a shade like this in any other palette. So yeah, I really like that there's cool tones in this and I'm definitely holding on to this guy. And then the last Juvia's Place palette I have is the Festival palette and it looks like this. And then it looks like this. I actually used to go to this all the time and you can tell that all my Juvia's Place palettes have been definitely loved like this black right here you can never find a good nice shimmery black and this is 
a nice shimmery black this pink I'm a sucker for reds and then you have a really beautiful white shimmer this is just such a beautiful color color story and then like this nice mustard oh I just absolutely love this palette such a good one this is the BH Cosmetics Carly Bible Deluxe Edition eyeshadow palette. This is actually my second one. I bought this palette. Originally, I hit pan on it, and then I bought it again. I haven't really played with it much since I rebought it, but I love this. This is a really good, neutral, mainly cool toned eyeshadow palette. I know people love the highlights in this. I'm not a big fan of them. I feel like they're too glittery and chunky for highlights, but they're really great for inner corner highlights. So, I mean, it's a, it's a decent palette. It's not bad at all. Um, the shades, I really like this shade right here, this like pink vibrant shade a lot. And I just feel like this is a really good, like I said, everyday wearable palette and it's super affordable. I don't know if they still make it. Um, I should probably check and see if they still make it. So this is like in the maybe pile, I guess you would say. So another BH Cosmetics eyeshadow palette that I have here is the Shannon XO The Remix. Now she came out with one that was eyeshadows on one side, lipsticks on the other side. I did not buy that one. This is the one that has eyeshadows on both sides. So the first side is her original eyeshadows that were in the first palette which I love these these are like beautiful earthy tones the shadow right here um, avocado reminds me a lot of the makeup geek and many MUA shadow and then like you know they're just really nice earthy wearable tones very Shannon and then I feel like this side is more like her fun side I love that there's like a cool tone purple in here which is really nice and then you have like this bright pink, which I'm a sucker for, and it's super pigmented. And then you just have like these nice wearable shimmers, and the shimmers are actually really nice in this. They're not super chunky or anything like that. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna be holding on to this guy. This was sold out forever, and I finally got my hands on it, and I feel like I haven't been able to play with it that much because I'm just so overwhelmed by so many eyeshadow palettes, but I just love eyeshadow palettes, so I have a problem. So let's get into some ColourPop eyeshadows, shall we? So the first one I have here is the ColourPop Yes Please or Cute AF, whatever. It has like five names on it, eyeshadow palette. And this is definitely a dupe for the Natasha Denona Sunset Palette, which I actually owned. I even did a review and everything like that on my channel for, and I returned it. Because when I got this one, it was like, wow, it's so similar. Do I really need the Natasha Denona one? But I always bite myself in the ass because every time I see uh, the Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette uh, online, I'm just like, oh. Because the quality of the Natasha Denona one is so much better than this one. Because the shimmers in here are like super chunky. I'm not a huge fan of ColourPop shimmer shadows. And these are just so freaking chunky. I kind of feel like I should just declutter this guy because you can see I've gotten a lot of use out of it, but I just never ever reach for it anymore. Like this yellow is actually pretty good yellow and you know, ColourPop mattes are not, not bad at all. I just feel like, like I said, I kind of wish I had just not returned the Natasha Denona one and kept it and just not got this one. And I just never reach for this anymore. It had its hype. The hype was there, and I just don't want it anymore. So I'm gonna declutter this guy. The next palette that I have here from ColourPop is the Karachi ColourPop Collection, the She Fema Rosa eyeshadow palette. And this, again, the shimmers just aren't that great. These ones are a little bit better than normal ColourPop shimmers. The um, mattes are okay. They're a little bit chalky too. And I wanted this so bad. I actually bought it, <laughs> decluttered it, then rebought it because I thought I really, really needed it and they were gonna discontinue, they did discontinue it, but then they brought it back. That's ColourPop. <laughs> oh my eyes to so that one. So I kind of feel like I should declutter this too because I just don't use it and I just don't reach for it because of the shimmer quality. So I'm gonna declutter her. Next up, I have the ColourPop Golden State of Mind. And I got this in a boxy charm because I never would have purchased this with my own money. 
um, because it's all like shimmery, mm, chunky mess. <laughs> These on the lid just fall right off. They are awful, even with the glitter glue. And some of them have like no pigment at all, and then some have some pigment, but they're just a hot mess. Like I really do not like this <laughs> whole thing at all. It was they came out when like the whole glittery eyeshadow thing was a thing, shimmery eyeshadow things. And if you look really closely at the pans, there's like oil seeping out of it, which is absolutely freaking disgusting. And I just don't. I just don't want this <laughs> and I don't feel comfortable putting it on my eyes with like this oil residue coming out of it it's even coming out of this one too I hope you guys can see what I'm talking about it's just kind of gross I feel like I should just throw this away so definitely getting rid of this guy and the next ColourPop shadow or the next ColourPop eyeshadow palette I have here is the one with Kathleen lights and it's the zodiac which I mean can we talk about this packaging it's just absolutely stunning and I love that the, you know like my little sign is right in the front because Sagittarius's are amazing but anyways um, I love that they put a mirror in this one this time but um, if you saw my review on this I just don't really like this um, the shimmers again are super super chunky and gross and just a mess um, this blue is absolutely beautiful I do like it but I'm not going to keep this palette for a blue. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just not super impressed with this. The Some of the mattes are super patchy. They don't blend out very well. Um, I don't think that this palette really makes sense to me. I mean, if you kind of take away this, it makes sense. But I'm just not like overly wowed by it. And I really regret buying it, to be honest with you. So I'm definitely going to be decluttering this guy and giving it... A new home. The last ColourPop eyeshadow palette I have is the Kathleen Lights Dream Street palette which again the packaging is absolutely gorgeous. This one I will be keeping and the reason why I will be keeping this is because I love the color story of it. Again the shimmers are meh, but I do really like the color story of it and the shimmers aren't as chunky in this one as the other ones so you know I just I like it I like this palette a lot I think that she nailed it with this one out of four five five color pop shadows eyeshadow palettes I'm keeping one <laughs> this is the Laura Lee Los Angeles party animal palette it looks like this this is just awful <laughs> this orange is probably the only matte in this that blends out good um, this pink is a hot mess um, these blues are a hot mess. This purple is a hot mess. Like, this is just a hot mess. I got this in a BoxyCharm, and I'm so glad I didn't spend my actual coin on it because it's awful. Like, it's absolutely awful. So, yeah, I'm definitely decluttering this. This was just, like, ugh. ugh. Next up is the Makeup Geek manny mua eyeshadow palette and this one is loved and abused i honestly love this little palette here but i think i'm gonna declutter it because when makeup geek came out with their well marlena came out with her whole story about her brand and all that stuff about influencers and yada 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 i had her back and then when the pumpkin spice latte palette launched I bought it and then like a week and a half later I still hadn't got any shipping information or anything like that and then I got a random email from them saying that it was sold out like a week and a half after I bought it I'd never had this happen in all the makeup I've ever bought they were really rude to me it took them forever to give me my refund it was just insane I just don't want to support them anymore so with that I'm decluttering it this is the Huda Beauty Rose Gold Palette Remastered. Even though I love some of the looks that I've created with this palette, like some of these shades are so pretty. Rose Gold, the shade here, Dubai, they're so stinking gorgeous. But my problem is, is A, her morals, 
and I don't like the fact that she claims that her brand is cruelty free but yet she sells mink lashes um, I also didn't like the fact that I feel like we're getting gypped this is $65 these eyeshadows looked like they were swatched and touched before I even touched them or swatched them uh, the mattes in here are absolutely awful the, the metallics are nice they're pretty nice uh, some of them are a little bit chunky and you know have fallout central but for the most part they're nice but the mattes you know they're not that great they're nothing to like write home about you know what I mean so with me not agreeing with her morals her ethics stealing from indie brands and just the overall quality for $65 no this is going bye bye I think like the cards pretty <laughs> Next up, we have the original Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette, and you can see mine is dirty, and you will see it is used and abused. I'm definitely keeping this guy because I absolutely love this palette. I think you can create so many different looks with this palette. Yes, there's definitely some repeats in here, and some that, you know, I feel like you could have lived without and put different shades in. But I mean like literally you can create anything with this. You've got your pops of color. You can create a nice green smoky eye. You can go deep in here. We have, you know, like a black. We have some deep browns. We have some nice warm browns. We have, you know, some redder browns. We have some very nice neutrals. We got some cream shades. We got like multiple different shimmers. Like I love this color right here. It's just so unique. And then this color right here was green oh my god even this green right here is just so nice they blend easily they're just they're just such good quality and for the price point you just cannot beat it I have literally created so many different looks with this palette and it just never ever ever grows old with me so yeah I'm definitely keeping keeping him and we're gonna dive into the other morphe jaclyn hill collection this is the vault now i bought the entire vault because i wanted it and i had planned on reviewing it for my channel but i haven't yet because one i'm so overwhelmed by so many different palettes and two because i just feel like they could have done better I feel like they totally uh, screwed people over with this I ended up getting the ones that have v2 on it which she claimed didn't mean anything but um, I feel like that's a lie <laughs> I don't know why I end up always buying stuff that Jaclyn Hill puts her name on I even bought the Morphe brushes that she just released and I'm gonna be doing a video about those very soon because I feel like you would think that because Morphe is a cruelty-free brand that they would make cruelty-free brushes and there's no way to make brushes with animal hair where it, they're not harmed. So even if they you know, are collecting them from shedding or brushing, those animals are still caged and held in an area where they're not free. So it's still harming them in some way. Um, so I'm still kind of torn with do I just can like completely disassociate with Morphe because I do like some of their products but anyways that's kind of got nothing to do with these palettes the first one is ring the alarm and I honestly haven't even played with this guy yet but I love the color story of this I love red shadows like reds purples mauves those are my thing green eyeshadows definitely my thing like more fall-esque kind of eyeshadows color you know anyways so yeah I really love this color called bomb ass even though it looks like it's super red in the pan it's more of like an orange when you swatch it but yeah I am excited to play with this guy and I'm not gonna be decluttering him the next one is dark magic which I don't really know why I probably decided I wanted to get this one because of the greens in here and the silvers and then like the this blue this navy blue so mine swatch amazing so I think I got a good good batch of them <sighs> I just don't know if I should hang on to these or not I guess I'm gonna hang on to that one I feel like I'm gonna end up hanging on to all four of these until I fully try them all out 
Bling Boss I have played with and I actually really liked the quality of this one. Purples, love purples. Like this shade right here is Fairy Treasure. Oh, so pretty. Ballsy. Like they feel nice, they swatch nice. This shade right here, Gem. Oh, I use this all over the lid and it's so pretty. So yeah, I feel like I got a good, good batch of palettes, which I'm lucky. I just feel like they screwed a lot of people and I don't know. If you guys would wanna see like a full in-depth review and look with each of these palettes, let me know. The next one is the Armed and Gorgeous one. And I feel like this one is nice. Like I like this green, like this really nasty pukey green. And then the shade Classified is absolutely stunning. Like it's so pretty. Coin is beautiful. And then Access is like this most beautiful mustardy color. And then VIP is like a true white silver shimmer so yeah i'm definitely gonna hold on to these i guess i just made my mind up swatching them again <laughs> you have no idea how many times i've sat there and swatched them and been like should i just get rid of them next up is the makeup revolution the emily edit the wants palette now i know there's been a lot of controversy with this guy um let's just say the mirror is absolutely amazing I love this mirror and if you watch me at all you know that I like never like any mirror in any palette but I love this mirror um, I have loved every single eye look I have created with this palette I know there was an issue with some palettes having mold and they pulled the palettes from shelves and they're like doing something to fix it everybody thinks that it's because of Tati's re bad review of why they pulled it that's not why they pulled it guys but um yeah I just really like this palette a lot the quality is amazing every single like I said every single eye look I have created I've loved I just think this is just a perfect name the wants perfect name for this palette and it's very beginner friendly it blends really really well uh, the shimmers aren't super chunky and gross the mattes are beautiful and blend beautifully they are super buildable I just really think that she nailed it in the butt with this and I love Emily and yeah it's just a really good palette and it's super affordable so let's get into some Jeffree Star shall we so I have here the blood sugar palette which is a palette that took the internet by storm I actually love the packaging I know a lot of people don't because they say it's like super bulky it's a little bit of a pain in the ass to open but I actually don't mind it I actually like it and think it's cute this palette is everything. <laughs> um, the shimmers, like I said before, I love reds. The shimmers are great. There's only a few shimmers in here, actually. The shimmers are really great. Um, they're super pigmented. For being a vegan brand doing these reds and purples, he nailed it. Like, this is just such a great palette. I think it's worth every single penny that he charges for it. And if you have not got your hands on this, this is like my number one recommendation from Jeffree Star is his liquid lipsticks and this palette. <laughs> I'm definitely keeping it. I ended up buying this on eBay for like $100 because it went out of stock and I wanted it so stinking bad. <laughs> and I'm a sucker and I'm impatient. All right, the next Jeffree Star palette we have is the Thirsty palette. And if you saw my eyeshadow palettes that I regret buying this was on there and I do regret buying it like I'm not gonna lie but these foil metallic shadows whatever he calls this formula they're just so freaking stunning and this top row right here is actually super beautiful it's just these colorful shadows that I'm a little bit like me because they're not they're just not like bam you know what I mean like they're not the best colorful shadows that I've ever worked with they're, they are buildable but I just expected more from him since it's 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 Jeffree Star you know what I mean I mean granted there's only three pops of color in this palette but I just wish that they were just a little bit more vibrant than what they are on the eyes I'm probably gonna declutter this guy 
next up we have my Tarte palettes. So the first one is the Tarte, Tarte Tartlet Toasted palette. Love the packaging. They smell so freaking good. The mirror and the Tarte palettes are really great. I went too ham on that highlight, didn't I? Um, but like I said in the eyeshadow palettes that I regret buying, I've never ever reached for this palette. So with that being said, I'm gonna declutter it. Like it just is not anything that screams to me or makes me want to use it. I feel like somebody else could definitely use this and would get a lot of love out of it and would appreciate it way more than I am right now with it just sitting and rotting away in my collection. And then we have the Tartlet in Bloom palette by Tarte. Again, the packaging's beautiful. Again, it smells amazing. Again, the mirror is amazing. This to me is like such a beautiful, neutral, leaning, cool toned eyeshadow palette. This eyeshadow palette will always mean something to me because I created my first YouTube video with this palette, but at the same time, I never ever freaking use it. So I'm super torn because I feel like the quality is decent. The shimmers are not like amazing out of this world. They're actually kind of chalky and chunky. They're not chalky, they're chunky. But um, oh, I just don't know. Like, do I keep it because it has a sentimental value to me? No, it's just makeup. I'm definitely getting rid of it because I just never ever use it and I can find these shades in multiple other shadow eyeshadow palettes that I have. So decluttering her plus I don't really agree with a lot of Tarte's ethics or ways so let's get into some little mini guys over here like some of these I got quite a few mini epic palettes so the first one I have here is this wet and wild what's it called walking on eggshells quad and this is actually pretty decent quality. These are their newer quads that they made. They reformulated all their quads. And this is one of the newer ones. I actually really like this. Um, I'm gonna hold on to this strictly for when I do like eyeshadow and fun stuff with my daughter. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna hold on to this little guy. Then I have this Blink BoxyCharm Electric Eyes Palette. And you guys, when I tell you the quality of these shimmers are amazing, they're amazing. Like, they're so freaking good. But I never reach for it because it's an all shimmer palette. I don't like using more than one palette to create a look. I like being able to just go to one palette and just create that look. Um, I have bought all matte palettes thinking that I would use this palette with them, but I just never do. I just end up creating like an all matte look. So with that, I am going to end up decluttering it, but I, like I said, this is amazing quality. I did look online and they sell this for like $40. Do I think it's worth $40? No, I do not think it's worth $40. I don't think shimmers are that hard to formulate, which is why I never understand why ColourPop's shimmers are so awful. I feel like mattes are a lot harder to formulate. I'm decluttering this because I feel like I just don't get enough use out of it. Then onto this little elf, what is this? Saturday Sunsets. This is awful. I got this free for like you spend so much money and then you like get this free. There's like no pigment to these. These are like literally nothing. Like nothing. <laughs> Definitely getting rid of this. I don't even think I'm gonna pass it down to somebody. I think I'm literally gonna throw it away because it's that bad. And then another drugstore eyeshadow palette which was absolutely awful and I did a video using this palette it's um, a full face of trying wet n wild this is the nude awakening palette by wet n wild it's one of their all natural palettes this is so bad you guys like it's nothing literally nothing comes off of these it's it's just bad it's, it's so bad bad Declutter. I think I'm just gonna throw that one out too. And then another little mini guy I have is the Tarte Tardis Pro To Go palette. This one actually isn't that bad. Oh, it smells good too. This one actually isn't really that bad. It has three really nice mattes and then it has three really nice shimmers. The shimmers are not that bad at all in this. 
and the mattes are really nice too. I just never use it. It's really good like for traveling and stuff, but I would rather, you know, bring a Z palette or bring something where I could get more looks out of. But yeah, for like an everyday person on the go or someone that travels and doesn't use a lot of makeup, I think this would be perfect for. But for someone like me, it's just not. And yeah, I just never use it. So I'm gonna declutter it. Next up, I have this palette from Ulta Beauty and it doesn't have a name, but it looks like this. And I got this free in one of those like kits. I haven't used it yet, um, but nothing really comes off when I swatch them. So I don't think it's gonna be a very good palette. So I'm just gonna declutter it. The next eyeshadow palette that I have y'all is from e.l.f. and it's the Mad For Matte eyeshadow palette, Summer Breeze. This is my favorite out of all the Mad For Matte palettes and it's the only one I own, but I just never use it. Um, I feel like, you know, for an affordable option, they're great. Um, they blend really nicely on the eyes and they're just really, really good. They're super buildable. They last really long on the eyes, but again, I just never, ever, ever use it. So I'm gonna declutter it. And then I have this eyeshadow palette or whatever mini palette from Pacifica. And this is the Beach Crystals palette and they are vegan as well, if you didn't know. Um, I've never touched this. <laughs> So I'm going to pass it on or donate it. I'm probably going to donate it since I've never touched it. I'm not even going to squash, squash it. I'm not even going to swatch it. I think it's super pretty. Um, I used to have another Pacifica eyeshadow palette with like all greens. And my daughter got a hold of it because I don't see it here. So she probably got a hold of it. And the quality was actually pretty good. So if the quality of all of their eyeshadows are like that little eyeshadow thing that I tried from them, then they're pretty good. Um... But yeah, I would just rather donate this because I don't see myself using this. I don't really use small little palettes like this. Next up, we have the Wet n Wild Art in the Streets palette, which I have used and abused. Um, I've mainly used this for like fun stuff with my five-year-old daughter and with my three-year-old son and stuff like that. So I think I'm actually going to declutter this for myself but I'm kind of gonna do like what I do with this one and I'm gonna kind of like put it away for, you know, like doing stuff with my daughter and my son because they love swatching makeup with me and they love, you know, playing with makeup with me. So like these little guys are really fun. I buy like the Wet n Wild lipsticks for them and stuff and they really like those. So I'm gonna keep these for that. And then we're gonna go on to some dose of colors. These are little like five eyeshadow pans with similar tones. The first one is the Sassy Sienna's and I've definitely used and abused this guy. The quality of these are so good. They're all matte. Um, the only problem I have with these eyeshadow palettes is that because the tones are so similar, every eye look looks exactly the same. Um, don't know if I want to keep this I feel like I should declutter this because I just never ever use it anymore and like I said every eye look looks the same when I when I use it so I don't I don't need it I don't need it and the same thing goes with the marvelous mauves palette by dose of colors when I saw this I knew I had to have it because of the purples and it's cool toned and it's beautiful and the quality is amazing. But again, I just don't use it. This shade always comes off like a white on uh, my camera, but, and when I film, but it's not white. It's like a very light lavender purple, and it's so pretty, but again, I just never ever use it. I feel like I should have gotten like the berry one or the baked browns one because those even though the tones are very similar there's like a shade in there that's kind of different so you can you know have a little bit more to work with so yeah i just feel like maybe someone else would really really like this so i'm gonna pass it on next up we have the revolution makeup revolution fierce as fire 
palette and I got this free recently when I bought the Emily Edits palette. It was like spend $15 and you got this free. This actually swatches really nice. <laughs> um, not bad at all. I just don't feel like I'll ever use it. And I own these similar shades in other palettes. So I feel like I can pass it on and someone else will really, really like it. We'll go into some indie products. So this is the Sugar Pill Little Twin Stars Limited Edition Eyeshadow Palette. This is like the cutest little palette in the world. This blue and this green are just so pretty. This pink, so pretty. This like gold, so pretty. I have created some of the most beautiful eye looks with this palette and I just really love it. I created like a really pretty icy blue look with this and oh, I'm not getting rid of this guy. I have the Joay Skinny Dip Ultra Foil Shimmer Shadows and I 100% agree with Ultra Foiled <laughs> because these are so foiled. Um, like this silver, bikini, skinny dip, tan lines. I wish I reached for this more and I'm definitely probably going to start reaching for it more now that I'm like decluttering so many eyeshadow palettes. I love it. Even this Midnight Storm is so beautiful. Could you imagine like a black smoky eye with this all over the lid? Oh, oh. So pretty. Definitely holding on to him. Then we have from Melt Cosmetics 27. And this is like so good. Melt shadows are just absolutely amazing. They are so worth the price point. Um, these like this brick red, this like nice peachy color and then you have like some cool tone colors in here oh they're just like look at these mattes look at these mattes they're just so beautiful the shimmers are so nice like i get so much use out of this palette and i love every look that i create using it so i will definitely be keeping it i also love that there's like nice warm tones and cool tones in here and then the Next melt palette I have is the Gemini palette, which took the internet by storm. I just love their packaging too on these slim palettes because they're known for their stacks. So I love that they came out with these nice slim, slim palettes. This was actually just supposed to be like a limited edition birthday palette um, for the owner and everybody loved it so much that they brought it back. Ooh, look at her. Like, look at her. These greens, like, look at this. Look at this. Look at that. So beautiful. And then you have, like, oh, like, it's just such a beautiful palette. Like, you have the contrast, and it's just like you get, like, this nice black. Like, this black is everything, y'all. Look at that black. I just, mmm. There's no way I'm getting rid of this. <laughs> this is the Rubbish Eyeshadow from the Rust Stack, and I just bought this as a single because I love the shade. And then I have the actual Love Sick Stack right here. And oh, again, the quality is so good. Like, look at this purple. Like, look at that. Oh, it's so good. And then we have is like it looks black but it's not it's like a I don't know how to explain it. it's like a blue gray so yeah definitely keeping this guy then next up we have the Too Faced Sweet Peach palette which if you saw my palettes I regret buying this was on here I do like the smell of it but it looks like it was used in abuse, but it wasn't by me. It was by my kids. Um, yeah, I'm getting rid of this. My favorite shade in here is Candy Peach, which I can easily dupe out. The quality isn't that bad. I do think it's good for like beginners, but it's just not something that I want. So I'm definitely decluttering. This is the Too Faced Gingerbread Spice Palette, and it looks like this, 
which I'm sure you'll see in some other palettes I'm going to be showing you soon that all of these shadows can be duped out with other palettes that I own. The shimmers are complete and total shit in it. Um, this one is just, it's like literally falling apart. It's just so awful, this guy right here. It literally looks like I have used the shade Frost, Frostbite Me, Frostbite Me, whatever it is, this silvery shade. It looks like I've used it a hundred times and I haven't. I've used it one time. It's just crap. So we're decluttering her. Next up, I have this eyeshadow palette from Pretty Vulgar. It's the Nightingale palette, which I got in a boxy charm. And it looks like this. This reminds me hands down of one of the Urban Decay Naked palettes, which I used to own and I have decluttered. Um, I don't know how to feel about this because part of me wants to keep it because I want to test out their formula. But then another part of me is like, mm, you're never going to use this Tara. Like, I like that it's cool tones, but they're like cool tones that I'm not like a huge fan of. Some of them are, but like, I just don't see myself ever using this, like ever. So I'm going to declutter it and pass it on to somebody else that will use it because I've never used it or swatched it or anything. So I feel like somebody else will, well, I probably have swatched it, but I just feel like somebody else will enjoy this a lot more than I will. I actually think I've decluttered more than I'm keeping so far. And then next up I have this palette from Essence and it's the Spice Up Your Life eyeshadow palette. And this is one of their new, they just recently released this and I haven't even played with it yet, but I'm super excited to play with it. Um, it swatches pretty decent, especially for like Essence. I am always on the hunt for good, affordable eyeshadow palettes and just eyeshadow palettes in general. So yeah, I think this is super nice. I'm like obsessed with this green shade right here. This one right here. Mm, I love this. Definitely keeping this guy. Next up is a palette I know I'm decluttering. It's the BoxyCharm Pure Collab or whatever. That's what it looks like. This is such crap. Like these are just like crap. The shimmers are awful. They fade away so quickly throughout the day. The mattes are like not pigmented at all. They don't, they're not buildable. They just don't last at all. Um, yeah, this purple right here doesn't blend for crap. I honestly have never tried this black shade right here or this deep shade, but every other shade I've tried in this, I don't like. I don't think it's good at all. And they retail this for like $40, not worth even $10. I feel like every single eyeshadow palette that I've gotten from a BoxyCharm, I'm decluttering. So it makes me think, like, is it even worth getting BoxyCharm for me anymore? Like, is it really? Because I'm literally decluttering every single eyeshadow palette that I've ever gotten from BoxyCharm. Anyways, so next up is the Laura Lee Los Angeles Nudie Patootie Palette. And honestly, I actually really like this palette. The mirror in this is actually really nice. If you can't tell, like from the palettes that I'm keeping, I don't own a lot of neutral palettes, like everyday palettes, or I'm not gonna be owning a lot, but if I want a very neutral look, this is the palette I reach for. These shimmers are pretty good. Some of them are a little chunky, but with a glitter glue, they actually hold up really well. These mattes are beautiful and they blend out so nicely. I really, really like this. Um, do I agree with, you know, the drama that she's been in? No, but I do like this palette. Next up is the Lunar Beauty Life's a Drag palette. And I think if you, you know, heard me talking about this before, you will know that I'm definitely keeping this. Um, the neutrals are pretty nice. There's a little bit of fallout with them. These shimmers are beautiful. Like, they're absolutely beautiful. But where this palette shines are the colorful shadows. This uh, Kiki color is total shit. I'm not going to lie. But all the other colorful shadows in this palette are amazing. And I just really love this palette. I've reached for it so much. The brush that came in this palette is actually really nice too. This is definitely staying in my collection. Look at my hands. Oh, my hands. All right. So another BoxyCharm eyeshadow palette that I got is the Alamar Cosmetics eyeshadow palette. 
and it looks like this. I've honestly never touched this. I've heard really good things about it and I've heard really bad things about it. It swatches pretty nice. I feel like I want to hold on to this one because I'm honestly intrigued by it and I do want to play with it. And then an eyeshadow palette that I have been absolutely loving lately and it's so affordable is the e.l.f. Opposites Attract palette. And it looks like this. You can tell I've definitely done my damage on it. I love the selection that they picked out for the cool tones and I love the selection that they picked out for the warm tones. Um, the shade Low Key is like kind of weird it reminds me a lot of the shade cube in the subculture palette but it's not as chunky but it's also not very pigmented either the mattes in here are so soft and nice some of them do need to be built up to get to like full you know opaqueness but they're just it's just not a bad palette at all like i really think that they did a really good job with this guy and yeah i'm so impressed with this for $14 like you cannot go wrong we're gonna talk about the KKW Mario collaboration palette or whatever you want to call it this palette sucks <laughs> like the mattes are nice don't get me wrong well all of them except for this guy right here this guy's not really nice uh, but the shimmers are not very good um, they don't last on the eyes they're super patchy uh, I just did not like them at all and I don't think this was worth my money so I'm gonna be decluttering that guy we have some colored rain eyeshadow palettes which I'm not getting rid of any of these this is the very cute palette which I absolutely love especially this purple right here Whew. and then we have the lovelies which is probably my favorite out of all the little mini palettes they have I mean look at this red oh so beautiful and this blue right here is just so nice i've created some beautiful looks with this guy right here definitely keeping those and then of course i'm keeping the queen of hearts eyeshadow palette oh my gosh do we see some similarities with the um what is it Too faced gingerbread man palette hmm do we see some similarities hmm because i sure see some similarities it's worth every last penny and it's so worth the hype that it gets oh my god such a good palette any colored rain eyeshadow palette is amazing and their eyeshadow quality is like out of this world it's so good it's a lot like melt um eyeshadow quality and then i saved these guys for last this is the last and the ending of my video so I have kind of a, oh, I'm going to stretch my back out a minute. So I have kind of a love-hate with these. Um, I'm a collector. And much like Juvia's Place, I used to feel like with Juvia's Place, I had to collect every single one of their palettes. And then finally I realized, like, no, you don't need to. And I feel like a lot of us feel that way sometimes. Um, with Anastasia Beverly Hills, I felt that way. I felt like I had to collect every single one of them. I used to have the Mario palette and then I decluttered it because um, it just didn't work for me. I had the self-made palette. I got rid of it because it was definitely expired. Um, I did not buy the Sultry palette and when I started looking at my Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes that I currently own, I was starting to think like, do I really need all these or am I just holding on to them because I'm collecting them? And they're not cheap <laughs> and especially when I've paid full price for some of these and then I've seen them at like TJ Maxx and Marshall's for like $20 it makes me a little pissed um, so I don't know let's just go down the line shall we <laughs> so the first step is the Norvina palette which looks like this and you can probably tell that I've gotten a lot of use out of this one I think that you know the colors are really beautiful in here I love purples I feel like she definitely could have gone more purple than what she did um, this one that everyone went crazy over soul does not look the greatest on me because of my skin tone it kind of looks like I have a black eye if I use too much of it um, some of the shimmers are super super chunky and you know aren't super unique i don't know i don't know if i should keep this one or not i'm probably going to keep the norvina one because i do like 
you know, the colors. And we'll see if it, you know, lasts in my next declutter. Then I have the Modern Renaissance palette, which I've always been like, if I have the colored rain palette, do I really need the Modern Renaissance palette? And I say yes, I do need both because like some of like this side, for instance, is different. You know what I mean? So I feel like I do need it. And like the difference is, you know, the quality difference. This one's definitely better in my opinion. The colored green one is definitely better. If you're trying to figure out which one you want, Modern Renaissance or Queen of Hearts, Queen of Hearts is way better in my opinion. But um, yeah, this definitely took the internet by storm. It's definitely well loved by me. Um, ah, I'm gonna keep it. Then next up we have the Soft Glam. And if this looks like it's never been touched, it's probably because it never has been touched. I've swatched it, but I've literally never used it and I've owned it for months now. I bought it when it first came out and I've never touched it. Um, I do like the shade orange soda. Like that's pretty, I like that shade a lot, but I just don't feel like I use it enough. I'm gonna declutter it. I'm gonna actually declutter it. Um, the next Anastasia Beverly Hills palette I have is Subculture, which has definitely been used and abused by me. Um, I love the tones in here. I actually was one of the people that actually did like this palette. If you just go in with a light hand, this palette is actually really nice and you can create some amazing, diverse looks with this. Um, I just feel like I never use it. I feel like the colors are just too dark for what I normally go for because I usually go for like color. <laughs> I either go for color or super wearable. Um, and this is more grungy type of makeup vibes, which I'm all for, but I just don't wear on an everyday basis. And because these are a little bit harder to work with, I feel like I don't reach for it because I know it's gonna take me a little bit to, you know, sit there and work with them. And I just don't have that kind of a time, you know, kind of time on my hands. So I feel like I'm gonna declutter it. The Prism Palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills. And I feel like this palette with Subculture, I feel like they pair very well together, in all honesty. Um, but I was very confused by this. I feel like if you do not own Subculture, this is going to be very confusing. The shimmers in here, like Throne is nice. Dimension, like they look like they're going to be really nice. Like this one right here. Is like I dug my finger in there to get anything off and there's like nothing there the shade sapphire is really nice but it like blunts to nothing almost on the eyes um, pyramid is just like a chunky hot mess lucid is like a mess too like it's just I don't know I'm gonna declutter him I'm gonna do it back to the Carly Bible palette do I keep her? Do I, do I keep her? I think I'm gonna declutter her. I think I'm actually gonna declutter her. I don't watch Carly. I'm not connected to this. I just don't use it anymore. I'm gonna declutter it. What I decluttered was the Prism palette from Anastasia, the Subculture palette from Anastasia, Soft Glam from Anastasia. The Mario KKW Beauty eyeshadow palette, the BoxyCharm Pure palette, the Too Faced Gingerbread palette, the Too Faced Sweet Peach palette, the Pacifica Beach Crystals palette, the Makeup Revolution Fierce Aspire palette, the Sassy, Ciar Sassy Siennas and Marvelous Moms by Dose of Colors, the Elf Mad for Mattes, the Ulta Beauty, whatever this is, the Tarte Pro To Go, the Wet n Wild All Natural, the Carly Bible BH Cosmetics Palette, the Pretty Vulgar Nightingale Palette, the Huda Beauty Rose Gold Remastered Palette, the Makeup Geek um, Manny MUA Palette, the Laura Lee Los Angeles Party Animal Palette, the Zodiac ColourPop Kathleen Palette, Golden State of Mind by ColourPop, the Femme Rose, 
by ColourPop, the Yes Please by ColourPop, <laughs> the Saharan by Juvia's Place, this really crappy e.l.f. palette, um, this Blink Boxy Charm palette, this Tartlet in Bloom palette, Tartlet Toasted palette, and the Jeffree Star Thirsty palette. And then what I'm keeping, I'm keeping the Colored Rain Queen of Hearts palette, the Colored Rain Very Cute and Lovelies palettes, the Modern Renaissance and Norvina palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills, the Life's a Drag by Lunar Beauty, Nudie Patootie by Laura Lee Los Angeles, the Melt Lovesick stack with this also single shadow that's tagging along, the Jaclyn Hill Morphe Original palette, these little wet and wild ones for my kids, this Jeffree Star Blood Sugar palette, the Essence Spice Up Your Life palette, the Elf Opposites Attracts palette, the All Olimar Cosmetics palette, does this have a name? Volume 1, the Gemini and 27 palette by Melt, the Skinny Dip palette by Jouet, the Sugar Pill Little Twin Stars palette, the Emily Edit, and uh, the Emily Edit with Makeup Revolution palette, the ColourPop Dream Street palette, the Shannon XO Remix and BH Cosmetics palette, um, the Festival by Juvia's Place, the Dolce by Juvia's Place, the Zulu by Juvia's Place, the Magic palette by Juvia's Place, ooh, all over, that's the edge of my bed, the Masquerade palette by Juvia's Place, and the Morphe Jaclyn Hill Vault Collection. I think I did pretty good. I think I decluttered more than, let's see, how much did I declutter? And I'm keeping 26, so that means I decluttered more than what I'm keeping. That makes me feel so good. Anyways, that is the end of this video. If you are all here for a declutter series, then give this video a thumbs up. And let me know in the comments below what your favorite palette out of all of these palettes are or is. And I really hope to see you guys on the next one. Bye guys.